टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस डिफरेंट कम्बिनेशन ऑफ वीनस रिटर्न कर्व वी आर बेसिकली गोइंग टू लुक एट द वीनस रिटर्न कर्व देन वी आर लुकिंग एट डिफरेंट फैक्टर्स विच विल अफेक्ट द वीनस रिटर्न कर्व एंड देन वी विल कम्बाइन सम फैक्टर्स विच हैव सम इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन द वीनस रिटर्न कर्व नाउ वीनस रिटर्न इज बेसिकली द अमाउंट ऑफ ब्लड दैट रिटर्न टू द हार्ट एवरी मिनट सो सपोज फॉर एग्जाम्पल is the human heart is the human heart to atria and to ventricle it is pumping blood into periphery and that blood is basically coming back into the heart so the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart every minute is cardiac output and the amount of blood that is returning to the heart is venous return different factors basically affect or influence the venous return which include the right atrial pressure the resistance to the venous return and the mean systemic filling pressure which basically pushes the blood towards the heart so mean systemic filling pressure pushes the blood towards the heart resistance or venous resistance basically tries to decrease or stop the amount of blood that is moving towards the heart and right atrial pressure may or may not uh, resist the amount of the blood that is flowing towards the heart now we have discussed in detail the mean systemic filling pressure we have discussed in detail the venous resistance and we have discussed in detail the right atrial pressure and also we have discussed the venous return curve but in this lecture we are specifically going to combine the different factors to properly understand the venous return curve and the different factors which uh, affect the venous return curve you must uh, watch the our previous lectures now first of all we are going to see the effect of mean systemic filling pressure on the venous return curve so in our first graph we see that this is our normal venous return graph and we see that it around right atrial pressure now here we have shown the right atrial pressure on the x axis in all these figures or all these graphs we have the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure on the x axis and we have the venous return on the uh, y axis similarly we have also shown the mean systemic filling pressure where necessary now in the normal venous return curve we see that around at normal right atrial pressure of 0 mm of mercury in a normal human being the venous return is around 5 liters per minute at this point in a normal human being with the normal right atrial pressure and normal mean systemic filling pressure the card the venous return is 5 liters per minute at this point and in a normal human being we see that if the right atrial pressure starts increasing for example the pressure in this atrium here for example in the human heart it is the right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle it is the aorta here we have the systemic circulation and here through veins the blood is coming back now if the pressure in the right atrium starts increasing towards this point from the 0 towards 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 we see at around pressure of 7 the venous return becomes zero here the venous return becomes zero at this point it was 5 liters per minute and at pressure at the right atrial pressure of around 7 mm of mercury the venous return has become zero now if we increase the mean systemic filling pressure or we decrease the mean systemic filling pressure we have discussed that the mean systemic filling pressure which is basically this um, denoted or presented with this psf this is the pressure which is helping or pushing the blood move towards the right atrium if this mean systemic filling pressure remains normal normally it is 7 so with the seven with the pressure of seven when the right atrial pressure reaches seven the the blood flow the, the amount of blood moving towards the right atrium stops because this is the maximum pressure of the mean this is the maximum mean systemic filling pressure so above seven when the right atrial pressure has reached this point the mean systemic filling pressure cannot force more blood into the right atrium because it has reached its peak seven level now if this pressure is increased if mean systemic filling pressure is increased for example in this in this graph we see that on uh, in the green color graph we see that the mean systemic filling pressure has been increased to 
now more the blood is coming with more pressure with more force toward the heart because mean systemic filling pressure is helping the blood move toward the right atrium so more blood is coming towards the heart at each and every pressure level of the right atrium so even at the zero right atrial pressure the venous return is moving from this point to this point similarly at this point at pressure level of 4 7 or any pressure level the venous return will be higher is compared to this normal venous return this is the normal venous return with normal mean systemic filling pressure if the mean systemic filling pressure is increased the venous return is definitely going to increase but if the mean systemic filling pressure is decreased this pressure if it is decreased then the the force which is pushing or helping or pumping the blood towards the right atrium is decreased so at each and every pressure level of the right atrium, the amount of blood that is returning to the heart will decrease. So the venous return, the venous return, even at zero level of the right atrium, will decrease from this point towards this point. Because mean systemic filling pressure has been decreased. Here it was increased to 14 and here it has been decreased to 3.5 and here it was normal now we see that when the mean systemic filling pressure was normal now the right atrial pressure has to reach a level of 7 to bring down this venous return towards the zero level when the mean systemic filling pressure increased the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure has to increase up to 12 or 13 to bring the mean to bring the venous return to bring the venous return towards the zero point but when the mean systemic filling pressure has been decreased to 3.5 now the now the right atrial pressure needs only to go towards or increase up to 4 mm of mercury only to bring the venous return to zero normally the right atrial pressure to inc has to increase to 7 levels level of 7 mm of mercury to overcome the normal mean systemic filling pressure of 7 but if the mean systemic filling pressure is increased the venous return at every level is increased and to return the venous return uh, to decrease the venous return towards zero level the right atrial pressure has to increase more it has to increase more but when the mean systemic filling pressure is low as compared to normal if it is low as compared to normal then the right atrial pressure has to increase only slightly to this point instead of this point to bring the venous return to zero level to bring the venous return to zero level now this is the effect of mean systemic filling pressure the mean systemic filling pressure on the venous return here in the next graph we see this graph is basically showing the the, the effect of venous return the uh, venous resistance the effect of venous resistance or resistance to venous uh, return or resistance to blood flow now here it is showing the the effect of resistance ven uh, resistance to venous return on the venous return curve now here again we see that this is our normal venous return curve this is our normal return venous return curve at the normal right atrial pressure of zero we have our we have a venous return we have a venous return of around five at this level we have a venous return of around 5 at 0 level. At this level, in the normal human being, in the red color graph, we see that the uh, right atrial pressure is normal and then the venous return is also normal, which is 5 liters, of, uh, 5 liters per minute. But if the resistance, if the resistance or the resistance to venous return or the pressure or the force which is stopping the movement of blood towards the heart it is stopping or decreasing or resisting the movement of blood towards the heart if it is decreased to one and a half if the resistance is decreased if there is no force that is stopping the movement of blood 
or the that force is decreased to one and a half then there will be a jump there will be a jump in the venus return there will be a jump in the venus return and even at normal right atrial pressure we have like double of the venus return because the resistance here has been dropped to one and a half so more and more blood is coming towards the heart so the venous return has increased even at normal level of the right atrial pressure and the venous return has doubled or it has increased from the normal level of 5 liters per minute venous return of liters per minute so here it is 5 liters per minute and when the resistance has been decreased to one and a half it has jumped from this point to this point but if the venous re resistance if the resistance to venous return is like doubled it is doubled the resistance is doubled we see it is 2x here then there is there are more forces which is which are basically trying to stop the movement of blood from the periphery towards the heart here it is very important to see that the mean systemic filling pressure the mean systemic filling pressure is the same it is 7 it is normal it is the normal pressure we are only manipulating the resistance we are only manipulating the resistance so by decreasing the resistance the venous return jumps up and by increasing the resistance the venous return at every level will come down so the graph of the venous return curve it will be like rotating this way with decreasing the resistance and it will be like rotating downwards by increasing the resistance and this venous return this venous return will be at every level of the right atrial pressure it will be at every level of the right atrial pressure even at level of 1 2 3 4 5 6 but at the level of 7 if the right atrial pressure reaches 7 the venous return will ultimately come down to zero level if the right atrial pressure reaches level of 7 the venous return will ultimately become zero whether the resistance is half or the resistance is normal or the resistance has been double but if the right atrial pressure starts increasing the venous return will ultimately become zero at this level in this graph we saw that this mean systemic filling pressure was initially increased and it, it was kept normal and then it it was decreased so if the mean systemic filling pressure has been increased then the right atrial pressure has to increase then the right atrial pressure has to go above the level of 7 it has to like reach the level of 12 or 13 but here the mean systemic filling pressure has been kept at 7 the mean systemic filling pressure has not been changed only the resistance has been increased or decreased so the venous return will ultimately become zero when the right atrial pressure has touched the level of 7 millimeter of mercury now we are going to combine these two graphs and see that what will happen if the resistance if the resistance to venous return is increased or decreased and at the same time at the same time the mean systemic filling pressure which is basically pumping the blood or pushing the blood or helping the blood move toward the heart is also increased or decreased now now see that if there is normal right atrial pressure there is normal right atrial pressure and normal venous return then we see that at the level of zero we have again venous uh, return of around five liters per minute at this point we have five liters per per minute uh, five liters per minute of venous return at zero millimeter mercury of right atrial pressure but the mean systemic filling pressure is also seven so the mean systemic filling pressure is normal the right atrial pressure is normal and the venous return is normal but if the 
means systemic filling pressure is increased and the venous resistance in this case the venous resistance is also normal now the venous resistance here has been decreased now we see that the the venous return the venous return the venous return which has been shown on the y axis it has jumped up it has jumped up now when the venous return here was the resistance was decreased to one and a half it just it 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 jumped up but here the mean systemic filling pressure was kept normal in this graph we see that the resistance has been decreased to one and a half but the mean systemic filling pressure has also been increased so there is a big jump above the level of 15 above the level 15 here it was just above 10 here it has jumped higher than normal even when the resistance was decreased so here we have two factors the resistance has been decreased and the mean systemic filling pressure which is basically pumping the blood towards the heart has been increased so the force which is pushing the blood towards the heart has been increased it has been increased and the force which is trying to stop the blood has been decreased so more blood is returning to the heart and the venous return has jumped to this point even at the normal right atrial pressure but in this graph we see that to return the vein to to decrease the venous return to decrease the venous return the right atrial pressure must move towards a level of 10 millimeter of mercury because the mean systemic filling pressure is 10 here the resistance was half but the right atrial pressure had to increase up to 7 millimeter of mercury only because the mean systemic filling pressure was 7 here the resistance is half just like this graph but the mean systemic filling pressure is high so instead of this 7 the right atrial pressure has to go up to 10 millimeter of mercury only then the venous return will decrease to the level of zero now here again if the resistance if the resistance to venous return is doubled if the if the resistance to venous return is doubled the venous return will decrease at all levels at each and every level of the right atrial pressure it will decrease from the normal level but here again the mean systemic filling pressure has been kept 10 instead of 7 so the venous return has decreased even at normal level but to bring the venous return or to decrease the venous return to the zero level the right atrial pressure has to go up to 10 millimeter of mercury instead of 7 millimeter of mercury because here the resistance was doubled but the mean systemic filling pressure was kept normal here the resistance has been doubled but the mean systemic filling pressure has also been increased so the right atrial pressure the pressure in the right atrium of the heart has to go up to this level to bring down the venous return to zero level in summary if if the mean systemic filling pressure increases the venous return will increase if the mean systemic filling pressure decreases the the venous return will decrease if the resistance to venous return is decreased the venous return will increase if the resistance is doubled the venous return will decrease if the resistance is decreased and at the same time the mean systemic filling pressure is also increased then the venous return will increase many times more than normal similarly if the venous the resistance is doubled but at the same time the mean systemic filling pressure is also increased then the venous return will decrease the venous return will decrease but the heart the right atrial pressure has to increase above the normal level of seven above the normal level of seven to bring down the venous return to zero level so that's all about the combination of different venous return curves thanks a lot for watching the video